Right, happy? Let's go, let's go. It sounds dramatic, but every second does count. We're back with the nurses at Portsmouth's Queen Alexandra Hospital. I've just been called to a cardiac arrest. <laughs> it's the best job in the world. Thank you. There for us in our toughest moments. People don't realise what we actually do day to day. Guys, fitting again. I've got a lot of responsibility. I need to be on my A-game all the time. Highly skilled professionals. Ready, set, slide. You could not run an NHS without nurses. We haven't got our blood pressure. Caring for us at every stage of our lives. A nurse is a friend, a counsellor, a person that sees you at your best and at your worst. It's just really difficult when we've been married so long. You did it! Happy nurse, happy patient. As a nurse, I think a lot of what we see makes you appreciate what you have. At a time when pressures in the NHS mean they're constantly stretched. I don't have enough staff. I really need at least one additional nurse on each area. It's one of the busiest days we've had. It's like having a traffic jam in a hurricane. Never before in the history of medicine has so much been done by so few. These are our nurses and their stories. Portsmouth, advanced critical care practitioner Caroline and matron Steph are on their way into work. So, busy day ahead? Who knows? They are two of nearly two and a half thousand nurses employed by Queen Alexandra Hospital, working across 69 specialities. If you weren't an ITU specialist, what would your speciality have been? Well, so I was a cardiothoracic before I became an ACCP. So I think I'd probably still be doing that, you know? Yeah. I don't think you can specifically say a nurse does this yeah. because they have got so many different... Extended skills. Yeah, extended skills. A nurse can be someone's everything. Yeah. I always wanted to be a tissue viability nurse. You what? I have absolutely no idea. One of those specialities is the acute oncology and haematology department, where nurse practitioner Rona treats patients with cancer and diseases of the blood. A nurse is a patient's advocate. We are the ones who are the first point of contacts of patients. They rely on you. So you are there to actually reassure them they trust their life to you. Rona's first patient is 84-year-old Beryl who's come into hospital for a planned blood transfusion, accompanied by her daughter, Leslie. Morning. Good morning, darling. Are you ready for today? Rona met great-grandmother Beryl yesterday when she came in for tests ahead of today's procedure. Well, your bloods are ready. Yay! Yeah. So I'm going to get my stuff then. We're going to put your cannula. Yeah. Just like what we did yeah, yesterday. Yeah, I'm going to try my best to be as gentle as I can. Yeah. Okay, you got baby veins. And then we can start your blood transfusion. Right, yeah. All right? Yeah, that's lovely. Okay, I'll be back then. Okay. Thank you, dear. Beryl is uh, one of our hematology patients. Uh, she's got an anemia condition, type of anemia we're in. It's very hard to hold her red cells in the normal levels is always going down, so she is actually becoming transfusion dependent. Beryl's blood test shows she has less than half of the necessary red blood cells in her system. Red blood cells carry a protein called hemoglobin, which transports oxygen through the body. Without a healthy amount, we can quickly become anemic, tired and weak. Today, Beryl will receive three bags of donated blood to bring her haemoglobin back to normal. I just need to raise your bed a bit higher so that I can be comfortable when I do it, okay? Yes. Going up to the second floor. <laughs> you're going to have a good day today, Beryl, okay? Yes. And we're going to make you feel better, okay? Yes. Once you have your blood done, I know that will make me a lot warmer. Yes, and that's right. A lot, a, a bit more. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. Before Beryl can start her blood transfusion, Rona needs to insert a cannula into Beryl's vein. Okay, Beryl, can you put this side? Lovely. 
So you did have a lot to drink this morning? Because I can see your veins are better today than yesterday. Yeah. Okay, Beryl, it's cold, okay? I'm going to clean. Clean the area, darling, okay? Yeah. You don't need to look, Beryl, if you're not comfortable with it, okay? I don't want to have so many, I don't want to look. Okay. Right, it's going to be steady now, darling. Oh, did that hurt, Beryl? No, you're fine. There you go. All done, all right? Yeah. That's minor operation done. <laughs> See you. See you. Ah, see you in a bit, darling. I love you. One floor below Rona, advanced critical care practitioner Caroline is working on the intensive care unit, looking after some of the hospital's most unwell patients. As an ACCP, you don't necessarily fit into one camp. You're not necessarily a nurse, but you're also not a doctor. You're kind of that in between. And I think that's actually really nice because that means that you then can merge the two camps together because historically it's always been doctors and nurses and they're always very separate. Whereas I think that an ACCP brings the two together. I use my nursing skills and then the extra skills that I've gained as an ACCP to make me an overall better practitioner. This is Chris. He is a gentleman that's been admitted with something called pancreatitis. So your pancreas is an organ in your stomach. And sometimes when it becomes inflamed, it can kind of stop your kidneys from functioning properly. 66 year old father of four, Chris, came into the hospital's emergency department yesterday with abdominal pain and vomiting. A CT scan confirmed a diagnosis of pancreatitis and he was admitted to the ICU for dialysis to support his kidneys. Your kidneys get rid of all like the toxins that are in your body that we all don't need, it kind of filters those all out and that's what comes out in your urine. When your kidneys aren't working very well, that slows down. So a lot of the toxins kind of build up in your body. And one of those in particular is called potassium. And pot the body, if the potassium is very high, it can affect a lot of different things, particularly to do with the heart. Jamie is just about to insert a line that will act like his kidneys, and it's gonna get rid of all of the stuff that the kidneys normally would get rid of, that at the moment Chris's kidneys aren't doing. Caroline is supervising trainee ACCP Jamie, who will use the ultrasound machine to guide him as he inserts a tube into Chris's groin. Just going to give you a nice antiseptic clean, OK? What I'm going to do, sir, is I've got this numbing injection, OK, to make it as painless as I possibly can for you. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah, I feel a couple of sharp scratches. You feel any pressure here, sir? Any pressure there? You OK, Chris? Yeah, a little bit. Any pain? No. OK. You'll feel pressure, but not pain. Well, you shouldn't do. Let us know if you do. OK. Boom. So you can see the wire comes up bright white on there, and that's the vein. And when Jamie squashes it, veins squash, arteries don't. Chris, all in. He's just going to stitch it all in now, OK? OK. All right. You did very well. Thank you. Don't the line went in very well. Now we just need to get Chris attached up to the dialysis machine and hope that that helps kickstart his kidneys. Right, come on then. Nurse consultant Sarah is the hospital lead for palliative and end of life care. So now I'm going to see Jane, who is one of the patients on the cancer ward here in the hospital. And she has a gastric cancer, a cancer in the stomach area, which unfortunately means that she hasn't been able to eat and drink very much. She's having problems for her body to absorb all the nutrients and so on. And what we found with Jane is that she needed to have some extra support, some extra nutrition to help her. Jane has been referred to Sarah and the palliative care team because although her cancer is incurable, they are able to help with treatments that allow her to live more comfortably. Hello, lovely Jane. Hello, lovely Sarah. <laughs> 
How are you today? I'm okay, thank you, yeah. 46-year-old Jane was diagnosed with metastatic gastric carcinoma three months ago. While Jane is in hospital, she's scheduled to have three rounds of palliative chemotherapy. You know, I was telling you, I have kind of like a mixture of symptoms. So I get kind of like two days of some weird pain and then two days of some odd nausea. And yeah, that's still going on. And my chemo, if I'm honest, it's kind of one of those amateur facial demons because where I know it was so bad last time, I don't really want to do it, but mm -hmm. I know I have to. So it's like, don't hurry, but do hurry. Who's to say it might be different this time, mm. but I know I need to go through it to blast myself. And I know that it's aggressive. When somebody is younger, you often just think, yeah, it's just not fair. They've still got their life to live with them and they're having to compress it all down. My first initial thinking is about what are their needs and sometimes their needs will be about that they've got young children. What are the needs of the children? How are things with Noah and everything? He's all good. He phones me usually at least once a day on the way home from school, literally for like talking at you about Warhammer, which is his latest craze. He just offloads me, chats me about everything and all his new video games and yeah. And your husband, how's he doing? Oh, he's brilliant. He comes in every day and he, he's incredible. He, he sort of massages my feet with special oils. He, he does my feet, does my stomach. Yeah, he's an incredible balance of being a motivator and a driver, but also very caring and loving and sort of, yeah, just, I'm blessed really. You're Jane or not this. It's no, no. This. Gosh, you are Jane no. and you, you know, you have your family and yeah. those that you love and love you as well. Yeah, but yeah, you sort of go from being a salsa dancing Latina equality, diversity, inclusion, engagement manager at the university who swims loads to being somebody who's mm. not able to do what they want to do. And that is um, really hard, but you know, I couldn't ask for more support. I really couldn't. When I saw her a couple of days ago, she was a lot more upbeat, feeling a lot weller. But I think her tummy's been feeling upset. She's had some nausea, she's had some vomiting. I think she's a bit nervous about having a second lot of chemotherapy because it's this double-edged thing. You want to have the chemotherapy to help you reduce the cancer, um, to relieve the side effects of the cancer, but it also has side effects on its own. So it's not unusual for somebody to be, yes, I want to have it, but actually I'm a bit nervous about how I might physically feel with it. lunch time for us <laughs> we don't always have a set lunch time so we just take it when we can i can't buy my food at the moment it isn't a jam jar because it's um it's homemade soup maybe i left it in my bag you didn't see like a jar of it looked like a jam jar no. no i don't think i've left it at home because i remember putting it in my bag no. I also remember putting it in the fridge. What did you dream of? Nobody would have thrown it away. I mean, I don't think it is here. That's really sad. I think somebody's thrown it away. Do you want Monday's on? No, no, I know. But thank you. I've got the bread to go with the homemade soup. It's gorgeous. Okay, the mask off the, the orange top there. <laughs> Have you eaten it? Oh, it's still lying around. You've gone very red. Huh? Yeah, it's a tomato soup. <laughs> <laughs> Nurse practitioner Rona is picking up blood from the hospital's haematology department for 84-year-old Beryl, who has anemia. This blood has been delivered from Bristol, where it was matched according to Beryl's blood type and antibodies. From the time I took it out, 30 minutes is allowed for blood to be transported. So my, my main priority now is to make sure this blood starts with no delay. Beryl, I have your blood. I don't know if you remember last time when we put the blood, we have to check that this is yours, okay? Yeah. So we're going to need to read together, because we need to check it, okay? Can I tell you this number? Yes, please. Six, four, three, gap, and the baby. Very, very good. Happy with me to proceed? Yeah. Very good, very good. Thank you. Rona, 
wonderful. I couldn't wish for better person looking after me. And I was dreading coming in. Okay, I'm just gonna go run this slow yeah. at first, okay, and see how you how you go with it, okay? Yeah. As um, you're having three bags, okay. all right. <laughs> greedy, aren't I? Yeah, greedy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're all right with this first bag, the next bag will be uh, two hours, okay? Yes. I've done this one for two and a half for now, as right. your last transfusion was quite long time ago all right yeah thank okay. you that's lovely there you go okay thank you you're welcome i'll see you again in a bit jake i want to try to sit up should we sit you up a bit chris yeah i think so on the intensive care unit, Caroline is treating Chris, who has pancreatitis. She and her colleague, Jamie, need to insert a tube down Chris's nasal passage into his stomach. Right, okay. That's it, keep swallowing for me. Swallow, well done, and again, swallow. Well done, swallow, swallow. Uh, uh, oh, I can't do that. No, I know. Sorry, well done. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. I know, it's all the time. Sorry. 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 <laughs> so with pancreatitis, their stomach gets very kind of swollen and they often get like a build up of fluid in their stomach. It can cause them to possibly vomit. So we want to try and stop that. So by putting um, this tube down into his stomach, we can drain any of the excess fluid that's in there. Chris, can I try one more time? Yeah. Just one. Sorry, my love. We're just going to try the other nostril. Take a sip of water for me. Okay. Right. Swallow, swallow for me. Keep swallowing. Keep swallowing. Swallow. Huh. Keep swallowing. Chris, swallow. Swallow. Right. And again. Swallow. 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 Uh, uh, uh. You swallow that? No. Uh. All right, my love. All done. It's finished. We won't do any more. It's fine. It's horrible, I know. Oh. It's horrible. It's horrible. Well done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll leave you alone. <laughs> Thank you. Particularly on ITU, as a team, you can always see that patient's progress and we only ever do things that we feel are in patient's best interest. We don't want to do something that's going to cause more harm than good. So because his tummy is swollen, it's kind of restricting his breathing. And this is a different kind of type of oxygen delivery system called high flow oxygen, which is goes up the nose. It forces a bit of the air in, which will help expand the bottom of um, his lungs. And it should hopefully make him feel a bit more comfortable. Chris, this is the oxygen that I was talking about. Okay, so it's a little bit bigger than this one. Can we try it? That's okay. Just lift your head forward for me a minute. That's it, well done. It's heated so it won't dry you out as much right. as well, okay? Yeah. So the next step is just to continue monitoring him, assessing his bloods regularly and assessing how he is. We call it the end of the bed test. You always look at somebody from the end of the bed, you look at their breathing, you look at how they are specifically looking, their skin colour, as well as formally going and having a, you know, assessing their bloods and listening to their chest. So we'll do that regularly and make a decision as to what's the best course of treatment for him. I can believe that he's going to be in intensive care for at least a few weeks. I saw him this small, like kind of early afternoon. Mm. He seems he seems different now. He okay. seems like he's getting that little bit agitated, pulling oxygen off. Okay. Um, wasn't able to put the NG tube in. Tried four times, gagged a lot, and actually kind of went a bit cyanotic with that. His norad is creeping up a bit. I, he just 
I can't tell you what he gives me there. Yeah. He's, he is, isn't he? He gives me the heebie-jeebies. Okay. And that's not a medical term, I know. But just worried a lot about how Chris is. I've noticed a bit of a change from the morning. Um, his breathing is getting a bit more difficult. He's needing a bit more oxygen and his pain, he seems more uncomfortable. Portsmouth's Queen Alexandra Hospital, nurse consultant Sarah is on her way to see oncology patient Jane. Since Sarah last saw her, Jane has had her second round of palliative chemotherapy. Although this won't cure the cancer, it will hopefully shrink the tumour, giving her a better quality of life. She's had a few problems in the past with pain and sickness, and I just really want to go back and see if that's under control or not. Um, and if she has got any of those, just trying to work out, is it from the chemotherapy? Is it from the illness? Is it something else? Hello. So actually, I'm just going to go and discover. It's a discovery visit. Good to see you. Nice to see you again. How's the chemotherapy go? Because when I last saw you, you were just about to have it, weren't yes. you? Yes, so I've had 48 hours of uh, delightful pump which was taken off last night. It, it went a lot better the last time. Um, and so far, so good. I mean, in terms of, I didn't have the sort of incredible pain and upset stomach and stuff that I had on the first time around. I mean, you know, as I say, taking each day, because as we know with chemo, you can have, you know, impacts days afterwards. Although Jane's son, Noah, isn't able to visit her in hospital, her husband, Anilson, comes for an hour every day. Nice to see you again. So, here, take a seat. I'm really aware that the most important person right now is this lovely man. Is there anything you need me to help you with today? At this moment, no, I think I'm on a trial run. I've got a plan. Okay. So, thank you. Um, but you have really helped me in terms of, like, you know, if I have got the pain or whatever, then just ask and. Yeah. Get the morphine if I need to, which touch wood I haven't needed, but you know, again, if I need it, I'll do it. Right, I'm going to leave because I, I want you to have time with the people, Thank there's no so important. Much. I'll see you next week. Thank you, everyone. No Thanks. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> so I've just seen Jane again. I saw her earlier in the week, um, and when she was just about to have her second lot of palliative chemotherapy, she started that a couple of days ago. Actually, she's looking much brighter and much better from when I last saw her. Her pain and sickness is under control. So I'm, I'm pretty happy. But at the moment, I just want to touch base with her every week to make sure that there's nothing else we can think about for her. I have to let this chemo take effect, which is for another two weeks, because you get different effects over the coming days. And that will make my bowel function start working better, or it won't. Um, and we just have to see what the outcome of that is, really. I'd love to be back home now, but I'm not in a well enough position to be at home now. So I do feel I'm in the right place. On the intensive care unit, Caroline is growing increasingly concerned for her patient with pancreatitis, 66-year-old Chris. Chris's pancreas is inflamed and putting pressure on his other organs. He's on kidney dialysis, and a high amount of oxygen. As we talked about earlier, your tummy is making it very difficult to breathe, OK? Your bottoms of your lungs are struggling to remain open because your tummy's so sore and big. Yeah. And you work, you're, you're looking a bit more knackered to me. Yeah. I think the, the best thing for you is that we give you some medicines to make you more sleepy yeah. and we give you a general anaesthetic, okay? Yeah. We go on a breathing machine. You won't know this is going on. You'll be nice and safe. We'll be looking after you okay. the whole time. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Oh. I'll let your wife know. Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. And then we'll get a few things ready. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, my love. So there's a problem with Chris's lungs, there's a problem with his pancreas, his kidneys. All of that is having an impact on him generally. 
So we have felt that the best thing to do is to give him a general anaesthetic and put him on a breathing machine, which just allows us to be able to kind of manage everything a bit more safe in the sense that he's not pulling off the oxygen. And we also don't want to do it when we're at a point where he's on enormous amounts of oxygen. Hello, it's Caroline again from Intensive Care. Sorry, it's taking me a little bit longer to give you a call. I just wanted to give you a little bit more of an update, really. We've decided that the best thing for Chris is to give him the general anaesthetic. I know. But we're going to do everything that we can to try and not let that happen. OK? All right. We wouldn't be doing this if we didn't think... Yeah, yeah. OK? I'll speak to you later. Take care. Bye. She's so lovely. Your wife is so lovely. Oh. Isn't she? Yeah. She's coming into. Right person. <laughs> she only just lovely to me. <laughs> She's coming in with your son tomorrow. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. I've told her everything. All right. Because of Caroline's training as an advanced critical care practitioner, she will lead the intubation for Chris. I hear you have a little dog. Yeah. What dog have you got? Coffee Spaniel. Aww. Filthy. We've been peroxygenating on the high flows. Do you want to see how it goes yeah. to the back? Chris, this is just more oxygen, OK? So I'm going to pop it over your face. Just do some nice breaths for me. I know it's a bit odd, OK? And then, Caroline, can you tell us your airway plan, please? So. And Chris, we're just going to talk about our plan, OK? That's quite normal. Yeah. So I'm going to use um, the Mac 4 and the Glidoscope. My plan is, is to try, as I can, to pre oxygenate with the high flow. Yep. Um, and then my plan is to use the Mac 4 with the Bougie, size 8.5 tube. Think of those nice walks that you take with LC, OK? Nice walks. I'm going to have a nice... Oh. I know, my love, I know, I know. That's it. On intensive care, we get referred very sick patients. Happy? There's so many things that you can do on intensive care, but it's our job as a team to decide whether it's in that patient's best interest to do all of those invasive things, such as intubation, invasive lines. Because actually, keeping somebody comfortable and pain-free can be equally as beneficial. Asleep, ventilating OK, oxygenating OK, blood pressure OK. That went probably as smoothly as it, as it could go. Chris is nice and asleep, doesn't know this is going on, which is good. And I'll just go and ring his wife now and let her know. I completely think that people have a false impression of what we do. Like, we don't just, like, plump pillows and, and give, like, t pots of tablets to everyone. We're doing, like, everything all the time. We're the war clerk, we're the social worker, we're the carer, we're, your, we're their relative, mm -hmm. you know? We're, we're absolutely everything. On the acute oncology and haematology ward, a new patient has been assigned to nurse practitioner Rona. So this is Antoinette. She came here because of uh, electrolyte imbalance. So we need to correct her potassium and her magnesium levels. So it's just a quick fix for her. 67-year-old Antoinette has breast cancer and has been having chemotherapy. She's come into hospital for the day as she needs an electrolyte drip to replenish the nutrients she's not been able to absorb whilst having treatment. Okay, Antoinette. I'm just going to start your fluids now, okay? So this is your big bag, big bag of goodies. Okay, okay the doctor wants me to run this for four hours. Four hours, okay. Yeah. Is that the potassium? This is the potassium and it also has the magnesium as well. So, yeah. You will, you will feel better after this. Yeah. yeah. Mm. 
say I am hungry, but I'm frightened of eating. Why, you, why are you frightened? Because yesterday I only had a bit of clear soup, and as soon as yeah. I ate it, it came out the other way. Okay. I'm just a bit frightened if it happens again. But it should not stop you from eating, darling. Yeah, no. Now you need your nutrition more. Okay, doesn't matter if you feel like you want to use the toilet, we can always. I don't, I don't make it, I just don't make it to the toilet. You can't make it to the toilet. Would you like me to put a commode on your side, close your curtain, so that if you do need it, at least you're here? Maybe. Yeah, because it's better for you to have something to eat. Yeah, let's get you something light. Yeah. Sandwich? Yeah. Okay. yeah. One or two bites? Yeah. That's okay. better than nothing. Yeah. yeah? I think she said they have ham and cheese. Yeah. I would like that. Yeah. Just a simple one at least. Yeah. You don't need to finish all. At least you have something to eat. Can I have a glass of milk instead of the water's really not enough. <laughs> glass of milk. Yeah, glass of milk. Yeah. Cold milk. Yeah. Thank you. Right, so your four hours is uh, counting down. I'll be back with your sandwich. Sometimes they think that nurses is just there to give you a cup of tea, give your lunch, hold their hand if they're scared. They don't actually realize that what that means is that we're actually releasing you from the anxiety, from from the sadness, from what makes you scared. A cup of tea is not just a cup of tea because you are trying to make them feel better. We're not, we're not talking about clinically now. We're talking about how they are as a human being. Is that okay? Yeah? Okay, enjoy your lunch. Beryl has now had two bags of blood transfused. Each bag takes at least two hours to be pumped into her bloodstream. She needs a total of three to ensure her haemoglobin reaches a healthy level again. I feel so much warmer. My fingers are pink and they're very warm. Getting very warm, all of me, and I'm gradually taking off all this stuff and keeping on some to keep decent. <laughs> I think you're gonna run out here now, isn't it? You have that energy now. I don't think I'll quite do that, but I certainly <laughs> feel a lot more better. <laughs> right. Final checks now, Beryl. This is bag number three. Right. Yeah, is your name still Beryl, though? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> so you will finish at around, well, let's say seven. Okay. Okay? Yeah, thank you, that's lovely. Advanced critical care practitioner Caroline is on the intensive care unit. Her patient, 66-year-old Chris, has been in hospital for a week and intubated for the last five days. Shen Stark? Yeah. Okay, my here you are. 66-year-old Chris. So the thing is, same central line is, I think, went in the day he came, probably day seven now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, we changed the central line and start TP. So a central line is a big kind of line that goes into the vein that allows us to give him food directly into his um, bloodstream. Chris, it's Caroline. You're nice and safe. I'm just going to pop something under your head. We need to change that line that's in your neck. So we're going to lift your head forward a second. Sorry, my love. Sorry. You'll notice that we all, all talk, but even when they're asleep, we always talk to them let them know what we're doing. Chris, I'm just going to lie you a bit flatter now. I mean, if you were asleep and unable to communicate, you'd want somebody to tell you what you were doing. <laughs> well, I would. This is um, a very sterile procedure. Yeah, I'll put a big gown on as well. I'm just getting all of the equipment out. Not all nurses can insert central lines, but Caroline can, 
as part of her advanced training. So this is an antiseptic kind of cleaning solution. Sorry, Chris, I'm just going to give you a bit of a clean on your neck, just a bit of an orange. Sorry, well done. So I'm just going to give Chris some local anaesthetic because the line is, is quite big. So actually, although he's on medicines that are keeping him asleep, it's always, it's much better to always give some local anaesthetic as well. I'm sorry, my love, sharp scratch then. Well done. The more I do this job, the more comfortable, I guess, and confident I feel in it. Sorry, Chris, bit of pushing now. I wouldn't necessarily say confidence is my forte. I remember when I first put my first central line in, when I was a trainee ACCP, and the anxiety was, was immense. I know, well done, Chris, I'm nearly done. In all honesty, I still get anxious when I put them in, and I've put in a lot, and I supervise a lot, but I still get anxious because I know that although this line needs to happen in order to be able to give drugs, there are, you know, potential consequences if the line goes wrong, and I think the moment that I become complacent about those, um, I need to have a reset. I know, I'm sorry, my love. I'm all done, all done, all done. Well done. Pancreatitis is something that is notoriously quite a long process and it's quite a long recovery. So I can't imagine Chris recovering, um, you know, in the next day or two. Um, it is gonna be quite um, a, a long slog. One floor above ICU, nurse consultant Sarah is on her way to visit Jane, who's now been in hospital for six weeks. I heard the good news today that Jane's hopefully going home on Friday. So I'm just going back to touch base with her, make sure her symptoms are under control, see how she feels about going home, um, and just check up with her, because she's also um, having her third lot of chemotherapy today. She's able to eat and drink a little bit more. She's saying that she's comfortable. Not, not. I'm really just gearing herself up to be able to get back home. Nice to see you. Yeah, really nice to see you, as always. I just wanted to catch up with you because I saw the good news about going home on Friday. Oh my gosh, I'm like absolutely blown away, yeah. Things have gone well, second round. I've just started the third round of chemo yeah. now. Due to finish on Thursday night. Okay. And then out the door on Friday morning is the plan. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, then hopefully I'll just do chemo as an outpatient. I can actually see my son. Yeah, so I mean, you know, I'm still not holding my breath in the sense that, you know, anything can change any time. But I feel, yeah, like there is light. There is light and there, there wasn't light for a long time. As a palliative care nurse, one of the most important things is about how do we help people live as well as possible, have a good quality of life to be themselves as long as possible um, until they die, which sounds really blunt, but actually that's part of what it, it is all about. So when I see Jane regaining some of her zest, some of her interest, some of her ability to, to think beyond of I don't feel very well, for example, it's really good. You are doing amazingly well. Yes, we know that, you know, the worst case scenario that you, yeah. know, you might get ill Anything at, could happen. Spouse, it's a possibility. Yeah. Um, but you are actually, if you think about the six weeks that you've been here, you have made, you've made great strides yeah, forward. Exactly. So tell me, you've got your son's birthday and your Next mother's birthday. That's the main excitement and driver at the moment. Is he looking forward to you coming home? He doesn't know because obviously, well, you can't tell well, a, I guess a sort of nearly 12 year old that you might be home on Friday, but you don't know. Yeah. So what I'm really pleased for Jane is that she's had a couple of weeks here in hospital and we've got her back to a bit more of a balance in her life. And she's actually able to start thinking about the things that make her Jane, not just Jane who's been ill, but Jane as a mother, Jane as a wife, Jane as a sister, Jane as a daughter. Um, and I think that's what I'm really pleased about for Jane, that she'll be able to do a bit more of that when she goes home. Fantastic, Dozy. Lovely really to see you. First thing when I get back home, I give my son a massive hug um, once he's COVID tested. Because, <laughs> of course, having a small child, you know, you, you're never going to be able to protect yourself totally. But I'm not going to not hug him and love him and cuddle him and tickle him and do all the things that I want to do. Cause Life's too short.
I have had thousands of pairs of work shoes. Have you? Yeah, although Through my when career. I was a ward nurse, I used to have to wear like yeah. actual black kind of shoes. Wow. Whereas in intensive care, you we do wear... whatever you want. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, trainers. Yeah. We really wear trainers for comfort because yeah. um, on your feet all the time. You like, ideally don't want to wear white shoes. Yeah, no. It's but comfort. You've got to have comfort comfortable shoes. Yeah. Eighteen thousand steps a day sometimes, uh, and you do not want your feet hurting. On the acute oncology and haematology ward, Rona is looking after 84-year-old Beryl, who's had three units of blood transfused over the last nine hours to increase her haemoglobin. The time has come. Hello. And how are you feeling? My goodness, you got rosy cheeks. You got warm hands. Yeah, it's warm now. Good. I am very warm, yeah. Right, so we're going home. All right. Mm, that's fine. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. Mary, you have been absolutely brilliant. And I thank, thank you. you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Bye, Barry. Sleep well tonight, OK? Oh, she will, trust me. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. How heavy was our shift today and still finish? Nicely. You <laughs> <laughs> weren't like that this morning, were we? With yeah, five hours like... ahead of us. <laughs> Beryl is a very happy patient. One of those patients that I will never forget. The experience that she has and the experience that she gave me looking after her, I will really treasure it. It's just nice if you have a patient that's happy with your service and really appreciate your hard work. Everyone will say like a nurse is a caregiver, but we're so much more than a caregiver. That is just one element of what we do and everything we do has care in it. I completely I agree. And I'm not saying that doctors don't have that, but I think that yeah. nurses have it even more yeah. and they're in a position to be able to be that person even more so. Yeah. You speak to patients and they might say, the nurse was amazing, they explained everything, they comforted me, they helped me, they gave me the medication that I needed, I couldn't have done it without them. So we're the people that do the do.